right, so today I'm working on my uh, snowblower here. Um, in a previous video you saw that I cleaned the friction wheel and that helped some but it's still, the, the drive is still slipping. So I'm going to take this opportunity here while it's uh, springtime and change the friction wheel and while I'm in there I'm also going to change the drive belt and the auger belt. Um, I've already ordered and acquired my parts. Managed to get these on Amazon dot com. Uh, you can get these from you know Sears as well, uh, Parts Direct, uh, but I found they were a little cheaper on Amazon. Uh, this is the drive belt and uh, the original part number you can see here the Murray part number was superseded by a Briggs and Stratton part number uh, so hopefully that'll work and then this here is the friction wheel that I got. That's what it looks like. And then this over here, I don't have the, the part number handy. Uh, there isn't one in the packing slip, but this is the um, auger belt. And then I printed out the relevant pages from the service manual that I downloaded online just to follow along with. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, finish draining the oil out of this thing. And um, that's good. The oil's got to be changed anyway, so uh, I'm going to drain it out because I'm up against time constraints today, and I don't believe I'll finish. And I'm going to uh, tip this thing up on its uh, on its front end, and I don't want the uh, the oil all running into uh, the carburetor or other places it doesn't belong, or running out of the engine. So um, I'm going to drain the oil, and uh, starting off there is the drain plug right there. Um, so we'll pull the oil out and then uh, tip it up on its front and start taking it apart. Alright, so I've got the oil removed and now I'm going to loosen these bolts and hold this bottom cover on. And I should be able to just loosen them. I shouldn't need to take them all the way off. That way I won't end up losing them. Okay, now I might have to get a screwdriver fiddle with that a little bit, but this should uh, pop off. Next step is to remove the belt cover, and it's just one, uh, one kind of bolt there, and then this kind of slides up and somehow pops out from the other side. Oh, there's a screw on this side as well. This probably would be easier with a socket. something. Okay, so with the belt cover off and the unit back on its wheels, um, this this is the auger drive belt and then the one that's in the back is the, uh, the traction drive belt. So the thing that uh, needs to happen now is this belt needs to be kind of untangled from its uh, operating position. There's a belt guide over here that may or may not need to be loosened up that's bolted here and then uh, this this can slide out from around the pulley uh, but the hard part here I think is going to be that uh, we have to unbolt the machine in half uh, this this part the auger auger housing bolts to the uh, the motor 
mount housing uh, through, I think there's three bolts here and three on the other side. So those will need to be loosened. Alright, so I've managed to uh, get the uh, auger drive belt off and uh, that was a little bit of a chore. had to, like I said before, take these bolts off here. And the, uh, the trick was they were, they were pretty tight. I had to use a half inch drive, uh, half inch drive, half inch socket on a breaker bar to uh, loosen these. They came right out, you know, with that type of leverage. And then this bottom bolt doesn't need to come all the way out. That just needs to loosen. There's sort of a slide built into the, uh, the metal so this thing can just kind of pivot and not come all the way apart. Um, it needs to pivot um, slightly just so that you can uh, slip the belt off. And the belt, I, I thought that the uh, pulley needed to be loosened up and removed, but that's not the case. The uh, Once this kind of breaks apart a little bit, the belt will slide off uh, behind the pulley there. There's a mechanism, so it'll come off, come off of this pulley in the front around the guide and then off the tensioner to the back and then off the main pulley and kind of up this way once everything's apart. Um, so now what I've done is I've bolted it all back together and left the belt out because the next step is to take off the drive belt which is back here and I think that this now needs to go back up on its nose and uh, we need to work underneath so I've, uh, I've bolted it back together for now and uh, then I'll go ahead and uh, change the the drive belt and then come back, split it apart again and reassemble, reinstall the, the auger belt. But then like I said, the next steps are the drive belt and the friction wheel which uh, which require uh, underneath type work. Okay, so I was able to thread the drive belt out of here. Uh, as it turns out, what I needed to do was uh, remove the swing plate shaft, as it's called which threads through here. There's a C-clip or an E-clip, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, that's the rod. And that slides out. Ended up having to take the tire off here to get it all the way out. So I slid that out and then uh, was able to kind of wiggle things around and divorce the belt from all the pulleys and uh, the tensioner. And I ended up sliding it out this side. Uh, this being the, the pulley that it rode, or I'm sorry, this being the pulley that it rode on and uh, just slipped it up over there, unthreaded it over there, and backed it out. Um, so now I'll, uh, now I've got the new one here, and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, throw this on and see, uh, see if we can get everything lined back up. Okay, so I've got the drive belt back on now. I still, still have the auger belt off, but put the drive belt on. Uh, cleaned, cleaned the friction wheel here while I was at it, had everything apart. So I've got that on, threaded it through from this side again, belt slipped up and over there, and then uh, kind of wrapped it around here. It's hard to see with the machine tipped up like this, but around the tensioner and up around the, the uh, drive pulley. Um, the, uh, the trick was is there's, there's a spring, of course I took this off, uh, when I took the belt off, there's a spring that uh, holds the tensioner on, and that spring needs to be off while you thread the belt on, and then uh, then put the spring on. The spring is on this side. You can kind of see it there, hooks on just to a slot in the body, and grabs a, uh, a mounting gear on the tensioner. So make sure that's off, thread the belt around the pulleys where it needs to go and then uh, hook the spring back up and everything should be good. Then I put the, uh, the rod there uh, with the C-clip back in. It goes here. That was a little bit of a trick to get everything lined back up. Um, of course that goes through and comes out here and then the C-clip goes back on. Uh, and I had to kind of fiddle around with it. I found uh, this tool that I have was uh, kind of useful for uh, kind of holding the rod in place and kind of guiding it to where it needed to go and then I was able to use my other hand to kind of thread it back through. So now the next step is to replace the friction wheel and uh, just a quick glance at the service manual there I think now the next step 
is to remove the bolt here, pull this axle shaft off, the wheel's already off of course, and then, uh, then it makes it a little easier to get at uh, this rod, hex rod, that holds this on, so then they tell you to remove, there's a couple bolts on each side here that uh, kind of attach that hex rod, so we'll remove those and then uh, should be able to get at the bolts that are on the, the friction wheel and slide that off. So that'll be uh, next step. Okay, so I've got the friction wheel assembly out here. And I started taking it off. I got two of the three bolts out, really. That's all of them there. So that just comes off like that. And then uh, I'll bolt the new one on. I'm just going to finish cleaning this to kind of degrease it a little bit. And then. Uh, Put everything back together so you can see with it out. <coughs> I just uh, took the axle out and slid the sprocket with the chain here out of the way, and then the uh, the hex shaft with the bearings kind of bolt up there. And uh, then there's uh, there's a couple of washers that are mounted on the assembly that need to slip on the insides of these brackets that kind of hold everything in place. Otherwise, they'll uh, they'll just fall out. Um, so that'll be reassembly. Here's the here's one of the bearing shafts. The the hex shaft goes in there, and that's just the uh, kind of the bushing or bearing or whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe I'll put a little grease on that while I got it apart before I assemble it. So go ahead and clean everything up and uh, put the friction wheel on and uh, start uh, reassembling. Okay, so everything's all. Reassembled now as far as the friction wheel goes. Uh, it was a little bit of a trick kind of getting everything lined back up. The, uh, the bushings kind of bolt back in and everything, everything's got to be attached to this hex shaft and kind of put in and uh, this stuff needs to slide out of the way and, and whatnot so it's a bit of a fumbly kind of thing and then there's these two washers that need to go in here um, and they need to be on the insides of these, uh, this, these bosses. So um, it, it gets a little tricky lining everything up and then putting the, putting the wheel and the axle back on is no big deal there. That gets all lined up. So that's, that's all set and uh, well, you get a little bit of grease in there putting everything together so I had to re kind of clean everything again uh, to get the grease off of it. So now I just got to throw, throw the other wheel back on, tip this back up and uh, I'm going to split, uh, split the machine again. Um, and uh, put the auger belt back on now that everything is back together. Okay, so to just kind of quickly show what this looks like when it's broken apart, the top four bolts, two on this side, two on the other, are removed, and the bottom bolts are loosened so that the whole machine can kind of pivot. And uh, what that does is it opens up space here between the, the pulley and the, <coughs> the rest of the, the uh, right mechanism there. And, uh, then you're able to kind of slip the, the belt in um, between the tensioner and the pulley and then you know just kind of rock this back together and uh, it'll uh, it'll line back up so I'm going to uh, go ahead and put the camera down and thread the belt in there okay everything's installed now and I've also adjusted the, uh, the idler pulley I felt that the belt was a little loose when the uh, when the auger was engaged. So in order to adjust the idler pulley, you just loosen this nut and slide it. There's sort of a slide on the bracket there. And then when it's engaged, uh, the belt should have uh, you know a reasonable amount of tension on it. And I also had to adjust the belt guide there with this new belt installed. It's a little thicker than the old one. And uh, there it was rubbing against the belt guide. And the, uh, the service manual recommends about an eighth of an inch gap. And, and stuff. So I did. Uh, I did that. And uh, all you have to do is loosen the bolt there and just pivot that wherever it needs to be to obtain the proper amount of clearance. So I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm gonna throw some oil in this thing and uh, and then uh, start it up and and uh, make sure everything's working.